ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, the Rural Report proudly brings to you another Rural Talk. Figured I'd have some fun with this one. So, what are we going to Rural Talk about today? Well, uh, I'm starting to get some of the uh, messages reaching out to me. Asking me on, is this, uh, whatever you want to call it, survival kit or whatever, a good fit for me? And I don't like telling people uh, yes or no on a ton of different things. Uh, but we've we've done a couple of these where, uh, I think it was what, we've done two or three of the Wish.com survival kits. Uh, and we broke them down. They were long videos and all that. Uh, I tried to do the due diligence and, and give it as fair of a point of view as I possibly could. But let's, uh, let's give this a little bit of a go, shall we? So when it comes to these survival kits, uh, if, if you're going on a certain topic, like let, let's, let's pick on uh, Refuge Medical. So if you want a good medical kit and you want some place to start, then Refuge Medical, which I do have a link down in the description section for Refuge Medical, and uh, I really don't really get anything out of that, but they make great product. The thing is, is if you go look at it, they don't sell one. What they do is they sell it for the scenario. And so... If you're going to cover medical, you're going to need to cover the scenario that you're going to be in. Now, whether that's a small boo-boo kit all the way up to a trauma kit or, or anything in between, it's going to depend on the situation. And a lot of the times what I see is you will get basically two that, that happen. One is they spend a ton of money getting a kit that they think covers everything and then when that event happens the thing that they need is not covered in that kit now keep in mind there's no kit <laughs> that covers everything it just it, it's not going to happen you are going to have different medical needs for i mean all sorts of different things so it, it doesn't matter even if we take medical out It'd be easier with medical because you're just trying to cover one area of preparedness versus trying to cover everything because the supplies and things that you're going to need for a flood is going to be extremely different than you would need for a drought. You know, yes, there's going to be a few things that uh, will be, you know, a basic and, and a lot of different kits, but beyond that, they're going to be extremely different. They're, they're opposite ends of the spectrum. And so that's why different ones create kits for the event. They have the um, uh, neonatal bucket, uh, which I don't think it's what they call it. Uh, I think it, they call it a birthing bucket, actually. Excuse me on that one. Uh, but that's a situation. You know, if you're in an SHDF situation, grid's gone down. It's been down for six months. Everybody's into chaos, uh, but you were pregnant or somebody that is in your group was pregnant before everything hit the fan. That bucket is going to be exactly what you need. And if you went onto their website and you bought an IFAC or you bought this or you bought, you know, the boo boo kit or whatever, it's not going to be much help than if you bought the birthing bucket. But the same thing, if you go and you buy that birthing bucket and uh, somebody, I don't know, uh, loses a finger, that bucket's not much help. Yeah, I'm sure there's a few things you could take out of there that uh, might be a little handy, but it doesn't solve the problem, okay? And that's where it comes into all these other little kits. Uh, they're flashy. They do really good job marketing. Uh, there's great pictures of these things with with amazing backgrounds and uh there there's all these uh, different items that's in there and they're painted a certain color or uh they describe them a certain way and they they make it you know 
to where this is the latest, greatest. You absolutely have to have this. Nothing on the market compares to it. Blah, blah, blah. Okay. Now, is there good kits out there? Yes, there is. Are they solve all? No, they are not. And they're, they're, there's never going to be one. I will stand on that hill. There will never be a kit that solves every problem you're going to face. It's just not going to happen. So you have to build your own kit. That's the best thing that you can do. Now, to get one of these kits, to get a good jump up, to get a leg up on everything, isn't a bad idea. And a lot of people go that way. They'll get the kit and they'll start testing it out. And then they will find this thing breaks. This thing's useless. Uh, you know, this I wish was a little different or whatever. And then they start customizing it to fit them. Okay. Uh, my hand might be bigger than yours. Uh, you may have more grip strength than I do. There, there's a bunch of different things to where when I grab something and I go, man, this, this is perfect. You grab it and you go, I, I can't squeeze this or I, I can't, you know, get my, my fingers fully wrapped around it. And then you're going to look at me and you're going to go, well, wait a second. And you start questioning just because it works for me doesn't necessarily it means it's going to work for you. That's where a lot of this comes into. Now, I want to give out this little piece of advice. Take this for what this is. The best kit on the market does not have the most items in it. It has the correct items in it. Now stop and think about that for just a second. That's going to be for a lot of different things in life, whether that's now or whether that is during SHTF. You can have a ton of things, okay? You, you can have a, a bucket with a ton of stuff in there. You can have a bag with a ton of other things in there. You can have a tote. You can have a garage full. You can have whatever. But if it doesn't have the correct items in it, it's not going to really amount to much. It's kind of that whole thing. Uh, you remember back, uh, you know, in that, that whole kind of Great Depression era where you saw the picture of somebody with a wheelbarrow full of money and that they dumped the money because the wheelbarrow was worth more than all the money it could hold. Kind of the same thing. You can have a ton of something, but if it's not correct, that bag or that tote is worth a heck of a lot more than everything that's in there. And so this is where you need to start getting creative. This is where you need to figure things out. When you buy something, make sure it's not an impulse. You need to buy it with a purpose. You need to have it already set in mind of what it is. What, what is your intentions? What are you trying to do with this purchase? What problem does it solve? If you don't have a knife and you see a knife, it's a good price. It's good quality. It feels good in your hand. You know, there, there's a bunch of different things about it that you like. It's got great features. It's made of uh, really uh, high carbon steel, whatever. Um, and so here's your thing. If you don't have a knife, you're solving a problem. If you have 50 knives, what problem is it solving? Okay. You know, it could still be cause, uh, solving a problem. You could have 50 folding knives, but you don't have a fixed blade or you don't have a, a saw or you don't have a machete or you don't have, you could still be solving a problem. The point is make sure that it is solving a problem. Don't buy something just because everybody else is. Don't buy something because somebody tells you that you have to buy it in order to make it through SHTF. Don't buy it because you think that your status will go up, okay? When SHTF comes through, nobody cares what name brand is on the side of whatever you're about to buy. They don't care what color it is, okay? It's one of those ones that... Uh, you, you get the worst absolute apocalyptic situation. I don't care if it's a, a you know, a small pink bike with a, a little basket on the front. If that's my only means of faster transportation, that's what I'm taking. I don't care, you know, if it's, uh, w whatever we can, we can, we can really go through. There's so much running through my head. I'm going to leave that one out because, 
Uh, I don't want a whole bunch of mental images running through your head on that. So I'm going to spare you because I'm trying to spare myself as well. You have to customize to fit your needs. And when it comes to all these kits, the best kit that you can possibly get is the one that has the correct supplies that you have tested out yourself to where you know each and every item in there works. You have a good comfortability with it. You believe in it. You've tested it yourself. You know how they function. You know what their uses are. You know how to take care of them. That is a pretty darn good kit. And so whenever I get these questions, I keep wanting to answer in this sort of way. And so here's the ugly truth when it comes to SHTF and these, these pre-manufactured kits. Are there good ones out there? Yes, there is. But they're usually geared towards one specific thing. So that way they cover that thing. When you have somebody like Refuge Medical put out a boo-boo kit, they're perfect for those very small, non-life-threatening injuries. They're great. They're perfect. Are they going to be something if you have somebody get into some really traumatic event? No, they're not. Okay. You can't have a bone poking through uh, your forearm and uh, put a Band-Aid on it and call it a day. It's, just, it's not the way that works. Okay. And so uh, it, it's kind of that whole thing. I want to get you to think. There's a lot of people out there that have good intentions. They have a good idea. They just, they get closed off and they don't see the bigger picture. I get it too. I'm no exception. And I, I have to stop myself because you'll get those people that they will start. And so they will do the whole thing where they, they start buying can after can after can after can of, of you know canned food. But they don't have a can opener. Or they get the one where they're buying tote after tote after tote of dehydrated food, but they don't have any way to collect water to rehydrate it, okay? There's give and take to everything. Usually when you buy something, it's not a standalone product. So when you buy a can, you need a can opener. When you buy something that's dehydrated, you need water to rehydrate it. When you buy a knife, you have to buy tools in order to keep it sharp and to maintain it. Same thing with a firearm or, or anything else. Nothing usually is a standalone product. It's usually something to where you get it to solve a problem, but then you create more problems. Make sure that you understand before you go buy any of this stuff. Look at everything that's involved. Are you going into debt with it? If you are, it better be an absolute life-changing, life-saving item. Otherwise, it's probably not a good idea to go in debt for anything. Number two, what problem is it solving? Are you impulse buying? Are you buying it for the wrong reasons? Number three, when you pick up an item, are you picking it up out of laziness or convenience? Well, I'm new into preparedness, and so I'm just going to spend $200 off of whatever.com because they have all these stuff thrown into one bag. Poof, there you go. Well, we've discussed this. Nobody's going to buy their way through SHTF. Okay, it's just not going to happen. And so you're not going to be able to go through and just buy your way to prepping. You're not going to wake up one day and just go, you know what? I'm going to hit a couple of stores this weekend and probably by, uh, you know, supper time on Sunday, I'll be done. I'll have everything. Prepping's in the bag. Prepping's a lifestyle. It's not a, a shopping list. You don't go through and check a few things off when you're done. It's just not the way it works. One of the biggest things about prepping is restocking. How do you replenish your stuff? Because we 
got the luxury of time now. We've got the luxury of peace. We have the luxury that we can turn on the tap and get water. We have the luxury that if one of our preps breaks, spoils, goes bad, uh, gets lost, stolen, whatever, we can go get another one. We're at the point of time that you can get on the little uh, smartphone or computer or tablet or whatever it is now, click a little thing here and there, and sometimes the same day, if not next day, you can have that same item delivered right to your doorstep. We're living in a time of convenience and luxury, and a lot of people take that for granted. Some people actually put it to good use. You use the tools that you've got to play with. You can you can moan and complain about it and call it evil and everything else. The, the thing is, though, is it's there and you can use it to your advantage. It's okay. When it comes to all this, though, how do you replenish those things? So you did. You went out and you spent $250 on this survival kit. What happens when the handle breaks? What happens when um, you run out of those those ultimate storm proof, you can get them soaking wet, they float on water, whatever matches? What happens when those run out? Then what? What happens if the, the container, the bag, the pouch, the box, whatever it's in, what happens when that fails? How are you going to carry all that stuff now? The dependency without having redundancy is pointless. And I'm hoping, hoping that this gets the wheels turning up here. I want to get you to think. I want to have it to where you, as a free individual, think for yourself, okay? I don't want to sit here and tell you what to do. I want to give you ideas so you can take that one that speaks to you and run with it. Let me close this video out with this. For me, prepping is almost kind of like art. You can take a, a picture or a short story or even scripture out of the Bible and you can have five people look at it or read it or whatever. And you can have five different interpretations. We just talked about this. You have to make it work for you. When it comes to, to prepping, yes, there's, there's golden rules. You have to have water to survive. There's nobody that's going to break that, that rule. It's just not going to happen. Is it possible to make it through a bad situation without a firearm? It is. It definitely is. It's possible. And so all the people out there that say, you know, food, water, shelter, and then firearm. Okay. I mean, I, I might even tend to agree with that, but you don't necessarily have to have one. If the time comes that you need one, if you have one, it's going to be uh, greatly appreciated. But if things go through, if you are strategically located in the correct place and it's a short term, let's say two month SHTF and nobody comes around, you didn't even need one. So just something to think about. So make sure that whatever you do fits your needs. Don't follow trends on TikTok or Instagram. Don't follow the famous person, the celebrity or anything along those lines. Don't pick up some book and, and do exactly what it says. It's good to put it to practice. It's good to take to heart what they say. But make sure it works for you. Make sure that anything that you do, whether it's training, whether it's buying something, whether it's going to be some new rule for your mag or group or whatever, make sure it works. Tweak it if you have to. Customize it. Make it your own. Because when everything goes, when the dust settles, the chips land, and, and, and the final thing goes through, whether it's a short-term, medium, whether it's a five-year SHTF, the whole goal is survival. No one's going to care how you did it. No one's going to care the product, the color, the shape, the size, how many or how few or whatever. It's to get to that 
point. Make it your own to give you the best possible chance there is. So, a little bit longer in a video than I wanted to make, but, uh, you know, it just kept flowing out. So, I hope that you guys got something out of it. Uh, I enjoy these little rural talks. You guys seem to really enjoy them, too. I get a ton of times uh, whenever I make these a ton of people that's never seen them. They're like, oh, my goodness, these are these are great. Um, I don't think I've really had a complaint out of a rural talk. So uh, maybe I'll have to start doing more of them. I don't know. If I'm doing bad, let me know. It's OK. You can do a thumbs down. You can be a little bit of criticism. I'm a pretty big guy. I can handle it. So with that, I hope you guys have an amazing day and a blessed day. And with that, stay tuned because there's definitely more information to come. And above all else, please remember to remain united because we're all prepping in this together.